Okay, so fortunately, RM, at least the GNU version of RM, I'm not sure about BSD or the other ones, uh, comes with a fail safe if you try and run RMRF slash. And you'll see here the output here. It is dangerous to operate recursively on slash. Use no preserve root to override this fail safe. And we're going to run this command with no preserve root, but with one caveat because I don't actually want to destroy my machine, even though it is a virtual machine and I could just set a snapshot and, you know, get it back later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Docker container. Uh, in this case, I'm actually using Podman, which is a little bit different than Docker, but you can basically treat them the same. And we're going to run this command inside of a Docker container and see what it does. So if we do Podman run RMTI, Ubuntu focal bash, and if you're using Docker instead of Podman, you would just substitute Docker here instead. Uh, this will give us our own container. Uh, I plan to do a video about Docker and containers at another point, but you can basically think of a container kind of like a virtual machine, but not really. Uh, it has its own, you know, root file system, and this root file system is different than my root file system. And so if we were to run rmrf slash here, you know, you'll still get this, uh, this failsafe, but we're going to actually use no preserve root in, in this run of this command. And before I run this, it's going to spew a bunch of output because there's a bunch of things that RM cannot possibly delete, uh, even, even though it's going to delete everything. Uh, and this is because they're either like special device files or they're mounted into the container in a, in a fancy way. So I'm going to run this and it's going to delete a bunch of stuff. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of stuff inside sys that it can't delete. These are like special, you know, fake kernel files because, you know, everything on, on Linux is a file. Um, and you'll see up here there was the proc file system at some point. Uh, actually, it's off screen. We can't even see it. <laughs> but anyway, we've run armrf slash. And interestingly, after we've done this, a lot of the utilities that you come to depend on are gone. So if I try to run like ls, for instance, you can see that there's no ls command anymore because that's that's gone. It's been it's been deleted. Um, actually, interesting that it okay. <laughs> this must have been hashed. I was like interesting that it uh, thought it was user bin ls. But you could still kind of poke around this file system even without the executables because bash is a shell and there are a lot of shell built-ins that let you do similar things. For instance, you can see that the file system is not actually gone. If we do echo star, you could kind of use echo star as like a crappy version of ls. Uh, you can see that some of the files are still here. And depending on which container runtime you're using, you may or may not see some of these. Like, I believe you won't see a render if you're using Docker. Uh, but you can actually poke around inside each of these. So if we do echo dev star, you can see that there's a bunch of device files that have still sat around. Uh, I believe there's hosts files and Etsy. Yeah, you can see host name, hosts, and resolve confer are hanging out there. And the proc file system, which represents all of the processes on disk and, and various other things. You can see that that is still around and you can still see uh, process one is still there. The reason bash continues to work is when you start an executable on Linux, the executable is loaded into memory. And even if the executable gets deleted off disk, the memory version of that code continue, can continue to run. And so that's why I'm still able to poke around in here. Uh, an interesting that I've done in the past is I've taken a moving container like this one where I've run armrf slash, and you can actually use uh, another container to bootstrap it back, back to life, basically. And the way that I've done it before, let's see if I remember how to do it. Podman, read. So we started with focal. Let's actually downgrade it to Xenial for, for the fun of it. Uh, so we're going to create a container and then uh, we're going to export that container to a tar file. Uh, <laughs> I know I have a script that does this. Let me look at what the script does. And user space to container. Oh, it's dash O. Mm. Okay, so we're going to export this container. So we've created a Xenial container. We're going to export it to a tar file. This is basically taking the root file system of that container and putting it into a tar file. Uh, and you can see that this tar file here is actually, oh, it's not that big. It's 80, 86 megs. We're going to extract this out to a directory here, tar-xf, out.tgz. And so you can see this is the root file system of that container. We're going to delete a few things out of here because I know that that breaks. Let's see, hosts, let's see, host name. 
and Etsy resolve comp. And then for each of these directories, we're gonna copy it into this broken container here. So we'll do uh, find dash type D dash max dev one. XRs, yeah, don't worry about this XRs command. <laughs> uh, Podman CP this to container colon slash that. That should, I think, work. Uh, let's see what it does. Specify the global max depth after the argument type. Why did it? Oh, it did warn up here too. Oh. Let's see what that does. It might work. Uh, oh yeah, you can see we actually we have LS back again, so you can see some of the stuff worked here. Um, and you can, you know, what? Run run another bash process. You can LS. You can make dirt. Foo. <laughs> you basically have a, a working um, file system again. I'm actually going to control C this because I don't actually know what it's, it's waiting on, but... Um, yeah, you can see that you can rebuild a, a valid container. And you know, if we cat Etsy LSB release, you can see that we've converted the original focal container into a Xeno container. But anyway, that's fun with Armor F Slash. Uh, I would not suggest running this on your actual machine. Uh, if you're going to use a virtual machine, make a snapshot beforehand. That way you can restore it. Um, but it's, you know, relatively safe to play around with this in Docker and uh, kind of fun to see what happens here. But anyway, uh, hopefully this was interesting. If you guys have additional stuff you want to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.